Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart. My name is Father Peter Rocco. I will be assisting as one of the Masters of Ceremonies for our ordination liturgy today. We are thrilled to have as our presiding bishop, Bishop Kevin Rhodes of the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend. Hopefully now everyone has a copy of the program. I think we are be ready to begin. So when the organ begins, if everyone could join in singing, all creatures of our God and King, I know you will sing with full heart and throat. Again, welcome everyone. It's great to have you all here.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We gather with joy on this Easter Saturday here in the Basilica of the Sacred Heart to celebrate the ordination to the priesthood of three young men of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Deacons Drew Clary, Cameron Cortens, and Gabriel Griggs. I am happy to extend a warm welcome to you, their parents, families, and friends who have been such an important part of their vocations and their journeys of faith. And Gabe, we pray also that your father uh, is joining us from heaven in the joy of this day. Thank you, all of you, for your loving support of Drew, Cameron, and Gabe. Together with their brothers in Holy Cross, we join in prayer for them as they give their lives to the service of the Lord and his church and receive the grace of the sacrament of holy orders. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, through the resurrection, you have given us a share in your new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us in glory at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed. And they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then, when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning, never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
El Señor esté con ustedes. Lectura del Santo Evangelio según San Marcos. Habiendo resucitado al amanecer del primer día de la semana, Jesús se apareció primero a María Magdalena, de la que había arrojado siete demonios. Ella fue a llevar la noticia a los discípulos, los cuales estaban llorando, agobiados por la tristeza. Pero cuando la oyeron decir que estaba vivo y lo había visto, no le creyeron. Después de esto, se apareció en otra forma a dos discípulos que iban de camino hacia una aldea. También ellos fueron a anunciarlo a los demás, pero tampoco a ellos les creyeron. Por último, se apareció Jesús a los once cuando estaban a la mesa y les echó en cara su incredulidad y dureza de corazón, porque no les habían creído a los que lo habían visto resucitado. Jesús les dijo entonces, vayan por todo el mundo y prediquen el evangelio a toda criatura. Mis hermanos y hermanas, palabra del Señor. Please rise. The Reverend Mr. Drew Michael Clary of the Congregation of Holy Cross. The Reverend Mr. Cameron Philip Cortens of the Congregation of Holy Cross. The Reverend Mr. Gabriel Julian Griggs of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these, our brothers, Drew, Cameron, and Gabriel, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? Upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation and training, as well as upon my own personal knowledge, and with the consent of the Provincial Council, I testify that Drew Michael Clary, Cameron Philip Cortens, and Gabriel Julian Griggs have been found worthy. I have relied as well upon the recommendations of the people of God whom our brothers have served this past year, and so I invite their representatives to come forward to testify that these, our brothers, have been found worthy. My name is Damien Cabral, and I am in eighth grade at St. Adelbert School. I, along with our language arts teacher, Ms. Dean, represent the St. Adelbert School community. I have known Deacon Drew Clary for about two years, and I have learned a lot from him. Deacon Drew helps at Mass. He reads the Gospel, preaches the, on the Word, 
and every Friday he gives me and my class a blessing right before we leave. As our social studies teacher, Deacon Drew has taught my eighth grade classmates and me about the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the branches of the government. More importantly though, he teaches us how to treat one another. If Deacon Drew sees anyone feeling down, he help, he goes up to and talks with that person, showing us how we should act with love and concern for one another, as Jesus would do. As our basketball coach, Deacon taught me and my classmates how to play the game and how to play respectfully, even though we lost every game. <laughs> Deacon Drew was never mad. Instead, <laughs> instead, he was pushing us to get better at the game. And he always had hope that we would win, even when most of the team didn't. Deacon's actions show him to be a servant and a true example of how we all should act if we want to be like our Lord Jesus Christ. I look forward to the day when this faithful servant could celebrate Mass for all of us at St. Adalbert School. It is with great confidence that I recommend Deacon Drew Clary for ordination of the priesthood. Good afternoon, Bishop Rhodes. We are the Galati family from Holy Redeemer Parish in Portland, Oregon, and we are honored to present Deacon Cameron Cortens for Holy Orders. Over the past year, we have grown to know Cameron as a deacon, a teacher, and a friend. He demonstrates the open arms of Christ, welcoming everyone to God's house and sacraments. Cameron is a gifted orator and instructor, drawing others to Christ through his knowledge of the gospel. His homilies challenge and encourage each individual to examine their lives and relationship with Christ in a new and deeper manner. Deacon Cameron also teaches seventh grade religion, designing a curriculum that draws our middle schools into a clearer understanding of the life of Christ and their role as Christians. His consistent presence in our school further provides students a vibrant model of the priestly vocation. He is committed to a sacramental life, working to increase access to the sacraments for all parishioners. He is dedicated to building our faith community across language, age, and experience. He is fluent in Spanish, which allows him to work with our large Hispanic community. Recently, Cameron even introduced a young adult group to encourage a reconnection between young adults and our parish. Deacon Cameron is a friend, ready with an open heart and a ready ear for any who may need one. We humbly present him for ordination in the firm confidence that he has been chosen by Christ for this holy mission. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. My name is Noah Wilson, and this is Olivier Whalen. We are resident assistants in Keough Hall, and we represent the community here on campus with whom and among whom Deacon Gabe has lived and served for the past year. We are excited to speak to Deacon Gabe's, or Deke, as he is known in Keough Hall, readiness for the challenge of the priesthood. Deacon Gabe has preached the word in every aspect of his life in Keough Hall with humility and with grace. As a homilist, his calming demeanor, quick wit, and theological prowess capture the minds and hearts of all who are present at Mass. While serving alongside Father Nate during the Mass, Deacon Gabe's confidence and holy effect regularly inspire reverence and a deep appreciation of the sacred among a room full of 18 to 22 year olds. No easy feat. Finally, as our rector, Deacon Gabe is a mentor, a cheerleader, and a friend. He offers everything from a welcoming presence as evidenced by his constantly open door and homemade bread to sage advice, whether about a roommate or a crisis of faith. 
to both residents and non-residents alike. Your Excellency, if there's one thing that we hope you take away from this reflection, it is this. In the words of another RA in Keogh, simply put, Deacon Gabe is a lock, or a sure thing. Based on our experience and knowledge, we, along with the rest of the Keogh Hall community, are delighted to recommend Deacon Gabe to the priesthood for ordination. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. I want to thank those who gave testimony from St. Adalbert's and Parish and from Holy Redeemer Parish in, in Portland. Thanks for coming so far. And Keogh Hall right here on campus for that wonderful testimony that these three deacons are, are ready for priestly ordination. Now, today I have to write a letter of appointment of of uh, Deacon Drew, but I'll have to put Dear Father Drew, because he's going to continue at St. Adalbert's. And Father Ryan, I'm going to put in that letter that I prohibit him from coaching basketball <laughs> as a priest so that they can get on the winning schedule. <laughs> Today is Easter Saturday, the seventh day of the octave of Easter for eight days we contemplate and celebrate the most overwhelming event in human history, the resurrection of Jesus. The spiritual joy of Easter pervades this liturgy and continues to fill our hearts today as we celebrate the priestly ordination of deacons Drew, Cameron, and Gabriel. And I was thinking about the significance of ordination to the priesthood during the octave of Easter. The Catholic priesthood truly proclaims the resurrection of Christ. Priests are called to be messengers of Christ's resurrection, of his victory over evil and death, and heralds of his divine love. This was the mission of the apostles, as we heard in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In fact, Peter and John were arrested for preaching the resurrection. They were enabled to do so with such boldness and courage because they were marvelously endowed with the Holy Spirit. And today, deacons Drew, Cameron, and Gabriel will be marvelously endowed with the same Holy Spirit. Through the laying on of hands and the prayer of ordination, these three young men will be consecrated by the Holy Spirit and united to our crucified and risen Lord in a new and radical way. They will be united to Christ, the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Drew, Cameron, and Gabe, the good shepherd who died for his flock and is risen, has called you to continue his work and mission. Empowered by the Holy Spirit in ordination, you will spread the word of life by your preaching and your witness and you will communicate the living water of the Holy Spirit through the celebration of the sacraments. My sons, how humble God is that he uses us to spread his word 
and to communicate his grace. How humble we must be, recognizing our unworthiness for the mission he entrusts to us. Always keeping in mind, as St. Paul taught, that we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. And that we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. At the end of the gospel today, St. Mark tells us that when the risen Jesus appeared to the eleven, he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, for not believing those who saw him after he had been raised from the dead. And then immediately he commissioned them to proclaim the gospel to every creature. This is rather paradoxical. Jesus scolds them and then commissions them. They had to be humbled before going out to preach. And this is an important lesson for us who are ordained, that we recognize our own weakness, that we must be on const a constant path of conversion ourselves as we preach to and serve God's people. God can make use of our weaknesses. What we need is to have faith in his fidelity and power. There is nothing like humility for attracting the grace of the Holy Spirit. As St. Peter wrote, God opposes the proud, and, but gives grace to the humble. The apostles needed to be humbled before Jesus commissioned them to proclaim the gospel to every creature. The apostles did indeed go out to proclaim the gospel as we hear throughout the Acts of the Apostles during this Easter season. In today's reading from Acts, we heard about the boldness of Peter and John in proclaiming the gospel. Peter had healed a crippled man, and then he and John were arrested, as I mentioned earlier, for preaching the resurrection. The Sanhedrin members were amazed by the boldness and speech of these uneducated fishermen. Peter and John had this courage, confidence, and authority from having spent time with Jesus, from having been his companions, and from the gift of the Holy Spirit they had received at Pentecost. They were ordered by the Sanhedrin not to speak or talk anymore in the name of Jesus. Of course, they refused. They said, it is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. To not bear witness to the risen Christ was not an option for them. Drew, Cameron, and Gabe, you make a definitive commitment today to serve the Lord and his church for the rest of your lives. You will receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will fill you with apostolic courage. To not bear witness to the risen Christ will not be an option for you. You will be anointed by the Holy Spirit, like Peter and John and the other apostles were, to strengthen you for the work of priestly ministry, to be instruments of Christ, to proclaim his gospel, and to celebrate the divine mysteries in the sacraments. Like Peter and John and the other apostles, you have spent time with Jesus, especially through your years of formation for the religious life and the priesthood, your time in prayer, and you will need to continue to spend time with Jesus in order to be good and holy priests. In fact, being a priest means being an ever closer friend of Jesus Christ with the whole of your existence. 
The members of the Sanhedrin recognized that Peter and John were companions of Jesus. If you are faithful to prayer, people will recognize that you are companions of Jesus. There's nothing more important than this, that you abide in Christ through prayer, from which your ministry will draw its efficacy. As Pope Benedict XVI once said, the prayer of a priest is a requirement of his pastoral ministry. This is because no community can forego the witness of a prayerful priest who proclaims transcendence and is immersed in God's mystery. I would add that prayer is necessary for your own inner peace and joy as priests, especially when you experience difficulties, challenges, struggles, or sufferings in your priestly life and ministry. We who are ordained won't make it through if we are not deeply rooted in faith and prayer. We'll get destabilized. We need to put ourselves entirely in the hands of the Lord who gives us peace. And I especially recommend your spending time with the Lord in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament as a daily, daily encounter with the Lord, along with your daily meditation on the scriptures and your faithful praying of the liturgy of the hours. Prayer is also the first service, the first service you are to render to the people you serve, praying for them, interceding for them. This is a fundamental dimension of the priesthood already present in the Old Testament. Trust that your prayer will be fruitful since in being ordained as priests, God is making you intercessors for his people. I mentioned earlier that the Catholic priesthood proclaims the resurrection of Jesus. Pope St. John Paul II once said that the Eucharist is the proclamation of Christ's resurrection in its highest form, just as it is the source and summit of all evangelization. I and all the priests here present can testify that there's no greater joy in our priesthood than the joy of repeatedly proclaiming the Paschal mystery in its sacramental reenactment in the Eucharistic sacrifice. Nowhere is Jesus Christ more strikingly the Lord of life than in the Eucharist from which his saving and life-giving power goes forth over the earth. Drew, Cameron, and Gabe, celebrating the Eucharist will not be the whole of your ministry in the church, but it certainly will be the most important aspect of your ministry. Everything else you do in your priestly ministry will take its perspective from its relationship to the Eucharist, from Christ's sacrifice, from the sacrament of his love for us to the end. Acting in the person of Christ, you will say the words of consecration, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, bread and wine will become Christ's body and blood. You will feed God's holy people with the true bread from heaven, the food that makes us live forever in Jesus Christ. Let the celebration of the Eucharist truly be the center of your priestly lives and of your ministry, since at its heart, the priesthood is an office of love, the office of the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. 
It's what the priesthood is all about. Offering yourselves like Jesus and with Jesus in sacrifice and praise for the glory of the Father and the salvation of his people. During this Easter octave, we share in the joy of Mary, the Queen of Heaven, and we pray the Regina Celi. We rejoice with her in the Easter victory of her risen Son, our Lord and High Priest. Drew, Cameron, and Gabe, may you welcome Mary anew as your mother and as the mother of your priesthood, as did the Apostle John at the foot of the cross. May she intercede for you that you may be faithful images of her son, the Good Shepherd. And in times of difficulty, may you hear her say to you what she said to Juan Diego. Let not your heart be troubled. Am I not here who am your mother? May you always know her maternal comfort, love, and protection. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank as trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? I, I do, with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, 
bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour, pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. Hear us, we pray, O Lord our God, and pour out upon these your servants the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, 
that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts those whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ your Son, in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus, in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles, who were consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them you added companions, to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness these helpers whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they hold the office second in order, received from you, O God. And by the example of their manner of life, may they inspire right conduct. May they be trustworthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to them and for the whole world. Thus may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Spirit, move, 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for these your servants whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, 
keep safe your gifts in them so that what they have received by divine commission they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, 
and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Cross community and our Moro Seminary community, we'd like to offer a, a very warm thank you to Bishop Rhodes for coming to ordain our three brothers today to the priesthood. Thank you so much, Bishop Rhodes. <laughs> thank you as well to all of you for coming to share with us our joy today, the ordination of our brothers. Uh, we invite you after to please join us for a reception in the main building under the Golden Dome. Uh, please just pass out the doors to the right and up the, the main staircase for the reception. Uh, gracias a todos ustedes por compartir con nosotros la alegría de este día de la ordenación de nuestros tres hermanos. Vamos a tener un convivio después, una recepción uh, con un refrigerio en el edificio principal bajo la cúpula dorada. Favor de pasar por medio de estas puertas y subir la escalera para estar más con nosotros, para celebrar más con nosotros. After the Mass, Father Brendan Macular, our Associate Director of Vocations, is going to be directing what's going to be happening with photos. So the, the, the Cortens family, Griggs family, Clary family, you're going to need to stay for photos. Uh, the men of Keogh Hall, parishioners from St. Adalbert, St. Casmers, parishioners from Holy Redeemer, all of you are going to need to stay for Father Brendan's instructions. The men of Morrow Seminary, we don't want to forget you, or the Old Collegians as well, there will be photos. And there will probably even be some instructions for you, Bishop Rhodes. <laughs> so, so please do stay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Father John. Well, you know, someone said to me beforehand that the ordination would probably be, you know, close to three hours. We have a lot more time here. I could... <laughs> I could, I could preach another homily, but um, I just want to say uh, uh, some words of thanks. First of all, to Father John uh, and the staff at Moreau Seminary. This is a, an excellent priestly formation program and religious formation, and, and uh, Father John is just finishing his, uh, his time as rector. So, uh, Father John, thank you and, and all the, the priests and lay staff and all the theology and philosophy teachers at Notre Dame and the MDiv program, thank you for the great formation um, that you gave to these wonderful three new priests. And Father Lees, thank you for inviting me. Um, I love the Congregation of Holy Cross. Thank you so much. The Congregation for Holy, of Holy Cross is a real gift uh, to the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend, and really to the worldwide church. So I'm very grateful. And, um, and I want to take a little bit of credit today because uh, Father Gabe was, you know, he probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our diocese, you know. <laughs> he, he went to St. Matthew Cathedral School, and that's where your vocation, I know your family, but St. <laughs> Matthew. So I, I do want to remind you, everybody, of that so that you can, and, and, you know, Holy Cross staffs a lot of our parishes, and um, I don't know what we would do without them, and I'm always asking for more, but, um, but it's wonderful. And, and Father Drew, you know, has been my MC a lot the past two years, and I'm so glad he's staying. And um, I know there's people here from Portland, so I can't steal uh, wonderful Father Cameron. So I know that your ministry there is, is greatly appreciated. Thank you to everyone who helped with the liturgy. Everything was beautiful, and of course the, the folk choir, thank you. Always beautiful liturgical music. and. Um, Let's continue to pray uh, for these men who today 
for giving their lives to the Lord and his church. And um, I know they'll be praying for you. And um, we're all very proud of you. Congratulations on your priestly ordination. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth, and faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thank